Welcome to Science with SETI Astro. Today, looking at the nucleus of deuterium and how I feel like, how aren't we taught this? So we're gonna be looking at the least complex nucleus that still has some complexity. So if this is a proton, uh, this technically would be the, the least complex nucleus, right? Just the nucleus of a hydrogen. But if we add one neutron to it, now we have the nucleus of deuterium, commonly called deuteron. Now you will see every depiction shown as two like spheres stuck together like this, a proton and a neutron stuck together by the strong force in like every description I've ever seen of them. Just to tell you how much of a nerd I am, guys, uh, I had this great book when I was in grade school. I've actually kept it all these years. It's called Matter. Uh, it, uh, it, it, it's really good, uh, but it, it really goes through the construction of a bunch of stuff, even superconductivity, super fluids, and uh, it was made in like 1974, so it's a little, little dated. Go through all the elements here, but after all the elements, it gets into uh, nuclear matter. And again, here's deuterium with uh, two little spheres touching each other. And importantly, it had this little blurb here about the, the pions role in the nucleus, um, turning a proton to a neutron, kind of like this mama bird's keeping her, her chicks in the nest. And again, talking about fusion down here, here's deuterium, again, two little spheres and tritium. As, as three little spheres. And even at the, the back here, it has different particle accelerators at the time. And you can, you can see the dates on these and, and just how dated it is. So the Matter book even was talking about a pion. So even looking at a more technical description of what's happening down in the Deuteron, you know, this is at least showing valence quarks and gluons and um, some energies associated with them. Now here's some more technical Feynman drawings of Deuteron uh, showing the interaction between the proton and the neutron uh, mediated by uh, virtual pions, including you know color charges and what's, what's happening there between the two nucleons. And this still really suggests separate like identities or groupings for the neutron and the proton, although it is getting closer to the truth that there has to be a lot more kind of mingling between them and I think this is starting to show that crack that we need here. So I want to dive into what this really looks like. So as you know in the world of quantum it's all about probabilities and uh, density distributions and things like this. This is not going to be two billiard balls stuck together at all. So these initial shapes were created from the Argonne National Lab back in the mid 90s and we're going to look at the two different spin states of the nucleus the first one is the minor contributor to the overall shape of the nucleus and then the second one by far is going to be the major contributor to the actual shape of the nucleus and we're going to go from low to high density at first in the nucleus you could start it's, it's like a shell with uh, a center hole and as you increase the density you can see it kind of will pinch off and form two denser lobes way in the interior. We're also going to look at it again. We'll go from high densities back to lower densities inside the, the nucleus. So we start off with kind of these two dense lobes and they expand out as we get lower and lower densities until they actually pinch off kind of a hollow spot in the center of the, the nucleus itself. And because of how isospin is conserved, uh, this is also the charge distribution inside the nucleus. There's no separate proton or separate neutron. Now let's look at the other spin state. This is the actual major contributor to the shape of the nucleus. And as this goes from low to high density, you could see it forms a torus a torus of density. There's no proton and neutron in here. The 
valence quarks are completely delocalized into, into one unified shape. Now again, let's go from high density to low density. And you can see we're gonna start with this torus and as it expands out to lower and lower densities, uh, you can see it pinches off and again, there's gonna be a hollow portion inside the nucleus itself. And again, there's, there's no left or right, no proton side, no neutron side. It's one thing. And we can be even more specific the actual shape is kind of like an oblate spheroid, but we can see what the long versus the short axis actually is. We can go through a, a calculation here and we end up with this, 1.047. So that's telling us we only have a 5% deviation from a perfect sphere. So no, it is not like a, a billiard ball of a proton and a billiard ball of a neutron stuck together. The, the valence quarks are delocalized and it's one shape, it's one thing that's almost completely spherical. And using electron scattering, we can measure the radius of the deuteron, the charge radius. The charge radius being 2.1 times 10 to the negative 15th meter compared to 8.4 times 10 to the negative 16th meters for a single proton. So deuteron is like two and a half times the charge radius Again, the charge radius would be like if you were trying to bounce electrons off a solid charged sphere. So deuteron, with its delocalized quartz, puffs up to like two and a half times the size of a proton and acts as a solid sphere of charge at that radius now. Now you can imagine how more and more complicated things get when there's more and more protons and neutrons. Hafnium-176 is like three times longer than it is around. And lithium-11 has a halo of valence neutrons around it, making its nucleus about the same size as lead-208. Link to this amazing video by MIT uh, in the description as well. So where does this leave us? No, it's not a bunch of billiard balls stuck together, but a single entity with delocalized quarks all in some blobby sphere of nucleus inside the deuteron. After years of seeing it always portrayed as billiard balls and maybe thinking maybe they're just kind of fuzzy billiard balls kind of rolling around with each other, this just blew my mind that no, it is, it's a single sphere of stuff and they just never taught us that. Please comment, like, and subscribe.